All right, so this is for the CPR V2 engine bay tank. I'm gonna cover what you should be getting in the box. Uh, obviously the tank, you're gonna get a section of hose for the drain. Drain, those are gonna go together. You're gonna need a P or PTFE, Teflon, some kind of thread sealant on those, whatever you prefer. That's gonna be going into there. You got a straight fitting, 90 degree fitting. One hose clamp, it's gonna be going onto here, you'll see later, and one M6 bolt. Uh, as far as tools, you don't need a whole lot. Um, you're gonna need a 10 millimeter, a seven millimeter, whatever flavor you wanna do that, ratchet, hand tools, whatever you've got going for you. Um, something to cut with, not necessary, but just a little bit cleaner of an install. Flashlights are always good. Pliers to get some hose clamps off. Some kind of lubricant to help push hose onto these push lock fittings, otherwise you're gonna get stuck halfway uh, and have to cut it back off. Um, I've got some sealant tape there. Again, whatever you prefer to use there, even Loctite works. So first things first, I've already removed the strut bar and the panels to kind of clear access ahead of time. Those will have to be removed. The strut bar will fit with the tank. It's very close, it's right up on it, but it does fit. Um, first, we're gonna pop this off. This is where the seven millimeter comes into play. those down now allow us to kind of flip this up we're gonna to need to get to that 10 millimeter right there and fight that out of there a little bit now that is loose now it's just a matter of disconnecting this hose that's where your pliers are gonna come in kind of give it a twist that will unstick it a lot of times they're stuck I've already drained this a little bit. I didn't drain the whole system. It's not necessary. Um, you might get a little bit of mess coming out, but you really shouldn't be getting much. Um, just a little bit of dribble. Uh, if you have a way, I just suck this out and you get minimal coolant coming out afterwards. All right, so that freed up that hose. We got one more clamp right down here. And essentially the tank is just replacing this. So this is gonna be going into the tank. We got a replacement hose that's gonna be going right back into there from the bottom of the tank. It's a little awkward getting in there. You have a trim popping tool that can help kind of get that hose off. might make a little bit more of a mess. That's it, just a little bit of a spill. That's out of there. We're just gonna set this over there. There's gonna be a couple things that will be in the way of the tank that you're gonna have to go ahead and move. First thing, this connector right here and kind of pinch that together, pop that out, and you can just stuff that down there and it'll be happy. This little raised portion that the connector was on will hit the tank and it won't let it sit flat. If you don't get rid of that, your hood is gonna hit the tank. Um, you can cut it real nice like. If you wanna go real easy, you can kinda of just grab it with some pliers and it breaks pretty clean. All right, next things, we're going to remove these two. And then we're gonna do the same thing here. These little ribs, those are not gonna let the tank go in there nicely. So we're gonna get in there all squared up and This cable is going to move out of the way. Um, let's see, pop it right under there. We're gonna be using that hole for mounting, so. All right, so. 
I like to cut these off. This was the mount for the original little tank. Um, definitely remove that metal clip. Uh, if you're not into cutting it, it, it will fit, but it just doesn't look very good. It, it, and it scrapes on it, but that will scrape the finish right off of it if you leave that in there. I'm gonna go ahead and cut those off. Again, you don't have to do this, or you can even do the plier trick I was doing before. You can just bend it, and it also breaks off pretty clean. Don't get your pink. Blow all that schmutz out the way. We're gonna go ahead and remove this one as well and put it on after the tank is in just to kind of give us some more room to work with. Give her a little break free. And you can't put these in the wrong spot. They're two different sizes, so don't worry about that. All right. It's gonna be coming very close to this hose. If you're comfortable with it, bending this hose is, is gonna help you out a little bit. You don't have to, um, and if you bend it too much, you can break this metal line. So just kind of get something in between there and bend it over. You don't wanna to put too much force because it will break. We're gonna go ahead and get the tank ready. Um, first things first, you're gonna have a section that should be pre-cut to the correct size. It's six and a half to seven inches. I, I can't remember exactly. And it does vary by car to car. So if you have to snip off like a half an inch or so, um, not a big deal. This is where we're gonna go ahead and lube up this fitting. Any kind of lubrication will work. Slide that on. Let's go ahead and clamp that. Um, since we're not using actual push lock hose, it generally will stay on and not leak without a clamp, uh, but you don't really want to find out that there's a leak later. Push lock hose is a lot tighter going on these things. Perfect. All right, we're gonna flip this over. Take this cap off here. AN wrenches, those are great for not marring fittings up. Um, if you have regular wrenches and you're just careful, those will also work out just fine. You want to just basically just pointing straight forward. There we go. Flip that on over. I'm gonna go ahead and install the drain valve before we get it in there. Sometimes you can run out of room trying to spin it around if it's already in there. So I've already got the sealant on it. MPT, you can really kind of go in by hand and it will seal. Um, I like to have this pointing about straight up or maybe on the side. If it's pointing over here, you're not really gonna be able to get to it to drain it, so. Kind of get it to about where you want it here. That is good. This one, yeah, this is the drain, so it's not seeing any pressure. It doesn't need to be insanely tight. You can go too tight on MPT and regret your decisions if you ever have to remove it later. All right, so this is ready to drop in. kind of find a nice way to bring it in kind of swoop it down move that out of the way and there we go go ahead and grab that little bolt you got line it up I always start these by hand first so you don't just strip out that rib nut that is in there 
You don't have to go crazy tight on it. That's held on pretty secure after that. This hose back down into a spot where it is out of the way, kind of under the tank, not obscuring this line that will be going back on. And like I said, that's where it is tight. I want to make sure it's not kinked right there. And slide that into position. You're gonna to kind of work it past that fitting. Would have helped if I bent it just a little bit more. This hose that was originally going to the top of the blower, we're gonna be reusing this. I do not like to reuse these clamps when we put them onto the push lock fittings. They just don't seem to work that well. So we're gonna slide that off. Again. Move that up a little bit. I'm gonna throw that on there. that in there we go place this let's take this cap off of there put it back on the blower And your tool of choice. Nice and snug. Next thing we're gonna have to work on is the drain line. Um, there's all kinds of ways to route that drain line down. You wanna get it under the car, not draining on top of the panel, the plastic panel that's under these. You wanna find a hole, um, or if your panel's gone because they like to fly off of these cars, you just want it down to where when you're draining, you can either drain it directly into a bucket under your car or uh, you know an approved section of the track um, not in the staging lanes don't ever drain your tank in the staging lanes because everybody will hate you you're going to ruin somebody's day um, in the pits if they're cool with it into a bucket so you can dispose of it just never in the staging lanes guys okay you're just setting somebody up for failure i'll try to show you where i usually route it it's kind of tough to see i got my flashlight but we'll, we'll try to get video of how I usually run it. We got the drain line done here. Uh, we'll show you that in just a bit. You can go ahead and throw these seven millimeters back into there. You're gonna wanna note on these two, if you just run them in, they're gonna go right into the tank because there's minimal space here. This one's got a little more space. This one's got practically no space. Um, so a lot of times I'll just kind of shave this a little bit shorter and then put it into this one here this one you, you almost just can't put it back where it needs to go um, unless you shave it really short to where it's not even existing anymore um, this one is enough to hold it where it needs to be see we got that tight fit um, this is open right now you flick it that way that's gonna be closed we got this running down down Oop, and then it goes right by the radiator hose and forward and then when we go back up I'll show you where I'm going to be running it out at the bottom of the car for draining. We got it coming out right along the side here pretty much right in line with this fastening hole. There is a hole in this panel right there just a little bit further back. I'm going to end up running it through this hole when I put it back up and then just cutting it to where it hangs you know an inch below the panel or so. So you're going to have some extra hose. So we will do that and that's it that's what it will look like 
and then we'll just cut it, you know, we'll just give it a little cut right there so it's just hanging down a little bit. And then you are done. Go ahead and shut tire brace, your panels, anything else you removed, and it's installed. Um, fill it up, turn the car on, it will bleed itself. You don't have to worry about air pockets or anything with that tank. You just, just fill it up about an inch below the top of the tank, keep it there. Um, so it doesn't get pressurized and start coming out of the lid. That's it, you're done. It bleeds all the air out into the tank itself. Um, it's kind of like a, a surge tank and you're done. Easy, no more burping the uh, cooling system. That's one of the best parts. The lid is big enough to ice if you are icing it at the track.